All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Yesterday we played music at an assisted living facility, and some of the uh, folks living there are World War II generation people. Mm -hmm. So the music played on accordion and mandolin. Works nicely. Yes, it does. Works nicely when you do songs like La Vie en Rose. Oh, yeah. La Vie en Rose. What's, what's the other one? Uh, uh, that makes the men cry. What's that World War II song? Oh, gee. Uh, Lily Marlene. Lily Marlene. I love that one. Oh, my gosh. gosh. What is it about I, w war? I mean, World War II was a war. It, there should be nothing romantic about it, but there's something about that era that is um, Susan Wiggs. And and in France, take it th so just yeah. double it up. It's not just uh, World War Two. It's in France. Susan uh -huh. Wiggs has a new book, and she's been with us before, and she's with us again. Always love having her on. Her new book is called Map of the Heart. It's already number one on Amazon. I found it on here. Number one. What does it call it? Number one in the new release category in holiday fiction. Oh, this is considered holiday fiction. Uh, good morning, Susan. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, you, you, you delivered um, very good news to me. I did, I did not realize that it had been up to number one on Amazon. That's what it says. Number one new release in holiday fiction. Nice. Nice. Okay, well, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, what, Labor Day holiday, maybe? Uh, do, you, do, you ever <laughs> do you ever take a holiday? <laughs> you know, I wish that I would take a holiday, but... Uh, I'm always carrying something with me, either if it's in my head or my notebook or whatever. So not really, but the, the lucky thing about my job is that every day feels like a holiday. Some are a little more boring and frustrating than others, but I think if you go to any job that you really, really like, um, then it's not such a burden to, um, to work at it. Do you, do, you, do you like the destination better than the the, the journey <laughs> um no no Other way around i like the journey right. better than the destination and um that, that's that's an interesting way to put it i like how you put that because <laughs> um the actual writing of a book is so incredibly exciting to me i get to be inventive and creative and um, make my own world and make my own happy endings, and um, I think that the process of doing that, for me, is where the pleasure is. At the end of it all, I get a published book that is very, um, it's a very well-produced item, but it's no longer mine. Now it belongs to the yeah, publisher and yeah, to the yeah. readers and to the audiobook person, and so, and that's kind of cool, because they all make it their own. You know, everybody who reads this right. book is going to read a different book. You know, I was excited about your intro about the World War II um, people fr who were around during that era. Oh, yeah. And um, the culture that surrounded them. And I'm excited for that generation to read this book because it's a contemporary story, but there is a storyline that delves back into the past, into the um, World War II era of um, a specific region in France where there was a lot of resistance activity and a lot of drama. So I'm very excited to, to present that. You know, they, they get to get back one of their own for a brief time in this book. So I'm excited for that. And you do help the reader subliminally because through um, Camila Palmer, uh, she has to make peace with her past and and so many times I mean myself included I'm moving forward in my life but all of a sudden the past creeps in and then you get analytical and you have your doubts and regrets and then it seems you can't enjoy the present but you're doing a great thing by having that kind of a conflict in there Oh, thank you. That, that's actually her journey is, um, you know, she, she is not in a good place when we first meet her. You know, her she's a single mom, a widowed mom, and, and has never really moved past that. And her now teenage daughter is kind of really, really, you know, getting in some trouble. And um, she's juggling that. Her father's been ill. Her father, who was born in France, um, is ill, and, and he's not well. And then suddenly, in the middle of all this, a package arrives, and in that package is an old camera with film in it. And, um, you know, one thing leads to another, and they find eight pictures that they're able to develop and view. And um, it uncovers this whole... 
um, new, well, I don't know if it's new, but this whole um, family history that they weren't aware of, so it's new to them. And that's what sets off the journey. And in the course of the journey that takes them from the Delaware shore to the south of France with, you know, the mom and her dad and her daughter, it kind of opens the world to her again and teaches her a new way to, you know, not be defined by the tragedies in her past. Wow, wow, that, that is so... You, you have a great way of just describing the book that make us want to read it. Well, it's, it's, talk about, oh, good. Well, that's, that's the whole point, right? My journey, my journey and destination question, I wanted to apply that to falling in love. Do you, do you love falling in love more than... Like when the the happy ending, what happens after that? Are you? Are you like, yes, let, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes I think I, I want to read a book called "After the Happily Ever After." <laughs> and you know, one, <laughs> yeah. One way that I um, that I kind of um, um, keep myself grounded is that I I in my real life I have a really lovely, wonderful marriage and family and everything, um, but the process of falling in love is exhilarating, you know, um, but you don't want to get too, uh, I guess you don't want to get too obsessed with it because it is a fast ride and it does have an ending and the next thing that's supposed to happen after the happily ever after doesn't always turn out. Um, So I like to think that for the characters in my books it always does, um, but I you know, I've I've written a couple of book series where that wasn't necessarily the case, but for Map of the Heart, um, I, I I have to say it all ends well for everybody, <laughs> and uh, you, um, you, not necessarily with you know high fives all around, but appropriately well. But you're talking about three generations here. You're talking about Henry and uh, Camille and also yes. Julie. And Julie, Julie the daughter, is, yeah. is growing up and uh, she's very lucky to see all sides of life where she can manage to have her own input and realize there are happy times left. Yes. Yes, um, and I'm, I was really, I, I have such an affection for kids of all ages. Um, when I was first getting started writing, I was also a teacher, and, um, and I've always felt an affinity for, for young people. And so the ones in my books, um, and I do get feedback from readers, so I think I, I, I think I do a pretty good job making them feel authentic, like they are actually kids who exist and so um julie in the story she's got some she's got some stuff you know Mm -hmm. she's a teenager and um hopefully i've i've given her storyline you know um what it deserves as well you know did a good job you know when we go to these uh assisted living facilities this is by the way the entertainment skills that we acquired when we were younger this is what we do with them now we go to You know what? They're a, I don't know. They can be a tough audience, you know, especially the ones who are hard of hearing. My mom lives in, a, in assisted living in my town, and I love to go there because um, they treat me like a rock star. But um, I realize that only half star. of them can really hear what I'm saying. <laughs> well, they're incredibly appreciative, and um, I, I, they give me hope that reading can really change a life. I mean, these women who are in their 90s will come up to me and say, you know what, that just made my day that I got to read this book. And yeah, yeah. So, you well, know, what I, what I they're, they're, it's fantastic. And um, I, I like to think they set the tone for readers for future generations. And I think they give us all an affirmation of what your book suggests. And the book suggests that we are in love with falling in love, that, yes. that we're, we are eternally remembered Remembering 17 years old, and and, and the, ev- yes. the evidence of that is in these nursing homes when the people who don't have dementia will talk to us. <laughs> they will always say, do you, yep. know, do you know, when I was 17, I met my husband. They go back to that year. It's always 17 or 18. They do. Yeah. It's remarkable, isn't it? It is. It, it is sweet, too. Um, Susan, always good to have you on. Uh, the book is, uh, is, again, called Map of the Heart. Call me if you want the copy I have. Um, SusanWiggs.com. Oh, yay. Website. Yeah, please call him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, okay, Susan. Yeah, and, and, and find me online at SusanWiggs.com, and we can continue the conversation on Facebook if you want. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for being with us today. We'll be, You're so welcome. We'll, Take care. We'll be right back. Releases to the extent possible before uncontrolled releases 
would begin. Dr. Edmund Russo is with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. There's more rain falling, too, through Thursday from what was Hurricane Harvey. Thousands of people have been rescued, with more still trapped, and 14 deaths reported. President Trump's on his way to Texas. He's also among world leaders condemning North Korea's latest missile test, saying in a statement all options are on the table. North Korea fired the mid-range ballistic missile designed to carry a nuclear payload over the U.S. ally, Japan, causing citizens in the north to receive text messages and emails urging them to find somewhere safe. The missile splashed into the northern Pacific Ocean. Fox's Benjamin Hall. Fox News. We report. You decide. Sometimes, what you want most from your car is nothing. No headaches, no surprises, no anxiety when it's late at night and you're on some distant freeway in a thunderstorm. That bit of nothing is everything. And that's what you get when you purchase a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz from your authorized dealer. Because only an authorized Mercedes-Benz dealership has the skilled technicians to certify that your pre-owned vehicle is up to Mercedes-Benz standards. Only.